You know, it's it's funny. Uh, again, as a as a bit of a data privacy and, and personal privacy nut, one of my biggest questions, and it's been playing out in my head for a long time now, is that if if AI is gobbling up all of our consumer data, not just contact information, but telemetry data and so on and so forth, and privacy legislation, you know, a growing number of privacy laws give us a right to action to claw back that data. The conundrum in my head has been right. And I'll try to frame it quickly, but but uh, clearly, if the AI model is able to to just remove my information as a data subject, the information that is uh, unique to me, if the AI model is able to just jettison that information out of itself, just just throw it back out, was it important that it be there in the first place, or does it represent a very serious and very fundamental? catastrophic change to the model when we pull information back out. And so I'm, I'm, I think there's, it's uh, two opposing forces, two perpendicular forces, right? The force of pri personal privacy legislation versus the force of what goes into the AI model has to stay there because it's learning from it. And there's, there's long-term ramifications if we take it back out. And I, I don't know how to grapple with that. I don't know how to grapple with it in my head, let alone at a, a legal perspective. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, yeah, Mike, I agree. I, I just, just to, to like, we're going to see a blender of cybersecurity, trust and safety, and privacy analysis that is going to bend all of us in weird ways, right? Because they all intersect in ways that I don't think we can fully wrap our heads around yet. It's not you. It's not just you. <laughs> I think we could talk for an entire other panel about um, AI and what is First Amendment rights and what is free speech. And all that, but I, I am just curious to hear everyone's reactions on this. If you can keep it to just a couple sentences, so we can move on to other things inside the EO itself. But, but Josh, what was your reaction to to that thought? I see, it's a perspective I've not heard um, hugely talked about. It's something I'm definitely going to research after this, and maybe hit up some of the, the attendees here for some more information. Um, Brian, do you have a couple words? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like before that, uh, on the previous legislation, California is also working on SB 294. It's a Senate bill um, on our framework. So that's also interesting, um, uh, which is really interesting because that has a little bit more impossible style, right? Uh, but going back to the current question in terms of, you know, what will, I mean, how it will all impact overall and what the cybersecurity teams need to do, right? I think uh, the, 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 that's going to be a lot of things. First of all, there is a big knowledge gap in this space. This is a fast, evolving space even a lot of ai i mean scientists themselves don't know you know the changes that's happening every day right so the whole idea of security experts understanding this is going to take a while but at the same time like you guys said like the, the, the higher level frameworks of you know data analysis of data analysis of privacy what goes in what goes out um so um, you know following some existing best practice frameworks can give you a, a kind of a head start right uh, I think there's a lot of stuff from the private sectors and experts in AI and and the, and startup companies have to rush in to kind of fill a lot of the gaps. Yeah, this this gap is going to be very large, even in cybersecurity. When when I remember in the 2000 internet days, you know, when some of these frameworks began to come, most companies didn't know how to implement them. So there has to be a whole series of you know knowledge gap uh, that needs to be fixed. I think that's going to happen. Sure, as as we things evolve the questions get even fuzzier and, and broader. But Dee, I wanted to give you a, a, a last thought on First Amendment and personal privacy and uh, personal expression. Sure. I, I think it's an interesting component from both the use of AI and development of AI. Let's talk about the development of AI because the use is, is way more uh, complicated, I think. But the development of AI is really, I think, it's going to be interesting because we saw this with Bernstein versus the United States in the 90s around encryption. I think that we are going to see something like that and it's going to test this theory of is code as speech. And I think it's going to, I think that is going to be the centerpiece in the, in the coming years. Um, I have my own personal views on it. I don't know that that's super relevant for this, but I, I would say watch this space. And I think that, like I said, history doesn't repeat, but it sure rhymes. Uh, and I, I can see this uh, coming up in a number of spaces.